Lesson 1.2 is rounding to the nearest 10 or 100. So there's two different ways we can do this work. One is using a number line, like I have here, or you can just look at the number and determine is it greater than or less than five. So I'm gonna show you how to do both ways, and then you can kind of choose which one works best for you. All right, so the first one we're gonna work with is using a number line. So I have a number line right here. You can create a number line in your math journal, and I will show you how to do that in just a second. So if we're looking at the number 32, and we want to determine is this number closest to 30 or to 40, because we're going to be rounding to the nearest tens, and we know that our tens are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on, right? We can keep counting by tens. So with 32, we know it's either going to be between 30 or 40, because those are the two tens that that number falls in between. So we can do this on a number line to figure out, is 32 closer to 30 or is it closer to 40? So. I'm going to start my number line at 30, so I don't have to number all the way down. So then I have 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. And I know I chose just not to number them all. You can put numbers next to all of them if you want. So I'm gonna mark 32 on my number line and it would be right here, that line. Okay, so this is 32. So I need to figure out, is 32 closer to 30 or is it closer to 40? Now by looking at the number chart, or the number line, I can visually tell it is much closer to 30 than it is to 32, 30, I'm sorry, 40. But we can do this mathematically as well we see that this is only one, two spaces away from 30. But if we went the other way to 40, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spaces away. So two spaces is a lot closer than eight spaces. So 32 is closer to 30. So let's try another one rounding to the tens. What if we take a look at number 36? So that way I just need to erase a little bit of this stuff. But I can keep the rest of my numbers. Okay. So I still have the same numbers because 36 falls between 30 and 40. So I need to determine is it closer to 30? or is it closer to 40? So I'm gonna go ahead and mark 36 on my number line. So it's right there. Okay, so again, you might be able to see right away, oh, it's closer to 40 than it is to 30. But let's go ahead and count those jumps again just to make sure what we think we're seeing is really true. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, so it's four spaces away from 40, or one, two, three, four, five, six spaces away from 30, okay? So we know four is smaller than six, so 36 would be rounded up to 40. It's closer to 40 than it is to 30, okay? So that's how you would do that on a number line. Now, if we were looking at a hundreds number and trying to round it to the nearest hundreds. So we're either going to be rounding this to 100 or we're going to be rounding it to 200 because 174 is greater than 100 but it's less than 200 so it falls in between these two numbers. Okay, so we are going to do the same thing using a number line to determine which one 
is it closer to? Okay, so for this one, we're gonna do, we're gonna make that zero, 50. Actually, I'm gonna space these out a little bit more. This is gonna be zero. This is gonna be 25, 50, 75, 100. And then this is going to be 125, 150, 175, and 200. And I'm going to stop there because I know that I'm looking between 100 and 200. Okay. So first thing I need to do, just like I did before, is I need to plot 174 on my number line. Well, this is 175. Okay. So I know it's going to be just above 175, but it's not going to be all that close to 150. Okay. So I'm going to put my dot just above to show me 174. Okay. So I'm looking, is it closer to 100 or is it closer to 200? Now again, if I'm just visually looking at this, I can see that this dot is a lot closer to 200 than it is to 100, okay? But again, if I wanted to check, I can estimate this is about one space on my number line away. But if I go this direction, it's one, two, three spaces away, because that's the divider. Okay, so one is less than three, so I know that 174 is closer to 200. Okay. So if we try another number, what if we take a look at seven hundred and eighteen? Okay, so if I'm still thinking rounding to the nearest hundred, 718 falls between 700 and 800. So I need to determine, is it closer to 700 or closer to 800? So I'm going to do the same thing, although I'm gonna start my number line at 700. Okay, so I have 700. And this time, because it's 18, I'm going to go by 20s. 720, 740, 760, 780, and 800. So I'm going to stop numbering my number line there because I know those are the two numbers that I'm working between. So 718 is 2 less than 720. So when I plot this, I know that my dot's going to be just above that 720 dash mark. Okay, so again, visually looking at this, I can tell that my dot is a lot closer to 700 than it is to 800. Okay, it's a much bigger jump to get to 800 than it is to get to 700. So I know that 718 would be rounded to 700. Now, we can also take a three digit number, we'll use 718 again, and round it to a 10. Okay, so even though it has a hundreds place number, we can sometimes still be asked to round it to the nearest 10. So then we need to look at the tens place of this number, which happens to be a one. So we need to determine, is this number closer to 710 or is it closer to 720? Okay, so I'm going to use my number line. I'm going to start with 700. I'm going to skip one in between just so I can zoom out a little bit. Okay, so every other line is a 10. So this is 700. This would be 705, 710, 715, 720, 725, 730, and I could continue to number my number line, 
but I know that these are the two numbers I'm looking at. So I'm going to finish there. I'm going to do the same thing that I've been doing before. I'm going to plot 718 on my number line. If I know this is 715 and this is 720, 718 would be right about there. Okay. So now I need to look, again, I'm only kind of looking at this small area right here. Is 718 closer to 710? Or is it closer to 720? Okay, so if we take a look at our jumps, this jump is much smaller than this jump. So it is closer to 720. Okay, so keep in mind, just because you have a three-digit number doesn't mean you're always going to be asked to round to the nearest 100. You could be asked to round to the nearest 10. Okay, so before we move on to the second way we could do this, I told you I would show you how to make a number line in your math journal. So to do that, fine. Okay, so here's my next page. So we could use a, a darker color to make my line. I could, right off the bat, because this is a straight line, I can use that red line on the page as my number line and then I use the blue lines to mark the numbers where they would be on my number line. Okay, Because I know if I do this, the space between each number is going to be equal, which the space between any number line is equal. This is the same length as this they're all the same length. Okay, so that's one way you could do it. That only gives you one number line. If you take your piece of paper and fold it in half, you could even fold it in half again. Put a crease in it, unfold it, and now on these creases, Trace your crease, and you now have another number line. Okay, so that's an easy way to make number lines in your math journal. So if you don't have a plastic number line or anything like that, you can make one very easily in your math journal, and then you will always have it with you. Okay. All right. But I told you there is a second way you could do this. So you don't have to necessarily use number lines. You can look at the number that is in the place value position that you are rounding to. Okay, so if we are not using a number line, the way you could do this is if you're rounding to a 10, you're going to look to the ones place to determine if you're going to round down or if you're going to round up. Okay, so if we take the number 63, we know it falls between 60 and 70. So we are going to look at the number in the ones place, which happens to be three. We're going to ask ourselves, is three less than, greater than, or equal to five. And that's gonna determine if we round up or if we round down. Well, three is less than five. So that means 63 is closer to 60 than it is to 70. Okay? So let's try another one. What if we have 87? Okay. So is seven less than or greater than 
5. Well, 7 is greater than 5, so we know that 70, or I'm sorry, 87 is going to be rounded up to 90 instead of down to 80. Okay? So that's how you're going to look at the next number, either the ones place or the tens place, to determine if you are rounding up or down, if that number is greater than or less than 5. Now you could be asking yourself, what happens if that number is 5? So let's take a number 457. We're going to round to the nearest 100. So we know we're either going down to 400 or up to 500. Okay, so since we're rounding to the nearest 100, we're going to look at the number that's in our tens place, which is a 5. So we need to ask ourselves, is 5 less than, greater than, or equal to 5? Well, we know that it's equal to 5. And so if it's equal, you are going to round up because 5 is then greater, or I'm sorry, 5 is closer to 500 than it is to 400. So your assignment for today for lesson 1.2 is going to be pages 11 through 12. And you are going to do numbers 1, through 19. Okay, so this is your assignment today for lesson 1.2.